Hi, I'm Heinbaum. Good to have you back. I'm not in my studio today, but in a theater apartment in the city of Essen, where I'm working on a theater soundtrack. I brought a few things with me, as you can see, and I will talk about one of these things in this video. The Drollo Effects Stretch Weaver. When I first heard about this pedal from my friend Simon the Magpie, I got super excited and I contacted David Rollo, who is Rollo Effects, and he sent me a prototype. I got this for free, but I didn't get any money to do this video, just to make this clear. Now, what got me excited is that this employs the technique of sidechaining, so you can use the amplitude of one signal to influence the effect on the other signal and vice versa. This creates a very alive and talkative feel to the music that makes even small setups complex. You might have heard of sidechaining first in techno music. The most classical use for this is to create a pumping bass line in time with a bass drum. Here I'm taking the bass from a Rode and Schwarz sound pack, the bass drum from the same sound pack, and I activate the sidechain compressor. So every time the kick comes in, the bass gets pushed down, creating a pumping effect. But Ableton Live enables that technique not only on compressors, it also does it on the filter. As the Ableton Live manual says, mastering this technique will give you more drink vouchers and result in more bookings. What the Stretch Weaver does goes much further. It gives you control over time, space and pitch and more. Stretch Reaver gives you control over wet and dry for each channel and it gives you control over the intensity of the effect and what the effect shall be via this knob. Then you can split the signal into left and right or mono, which is very handy. And you get eight effects. There's the tape effect, which I absolutely fell in love with and is the one that I tend to overuse. <laughs> The classic gate effect, which is one of the more regularly used sidechain effects, is also very useful. Here I'm using it to control a tape loop of sounds my friend My Panda Shall Fly sent me for our upcoming release on Muzan Records. modulator sounds also interesting as it has a very elastic quality to it that reminds me of the wolf tone box by Maleko. <laughs> There are effects on here that I didn't find use for yet in the music that I was doing such as the repeat and the stretch because 
a tape loop is already a repetition and you can say it's already stretched so it didn't care so much for the granular digital stretching sound but however the name giving weave effect is unique and gorgeous i employed it with the metasonics d1000 and look on the computer's fart box The interplay of these two monster machines and the weave effect creates deep and dark drones that remind me of Berghain. Electronic music instruments such as synthesizers and drum machines have the tendency to go in one way, the way you program them, and they're not listening to what is happening around them, as a drummer would for example, or a keyboard player. It's up to you to put that conversation into the music. And with a stretch weaver, this gets a lot easier. In this track, I control the pitch of the whole modular with the kalimba. origin story for this pedal is rather interesting and worth sharing. All came about when Scott Amendola sent me a CD of his recent duo project with Nels Klein called Stretch Woven. While I was listening to it and hearing both improvise of each other, I thought that it would be really cool if there was a device that allowed both their sounds to actually interact with each other. So you've got an instrument maker listening to musicians and thinking what would make them sound better, which is a lovely origin story. It's not based on how can we make a pedal that will sell the most, but it's based on pure inspiration. The one thing I don't like about the stretch reaver is the audible switching noise when you move between different effects. I like to play more than one effect in one track because it enables me to make the whole track structure bigger, especially with the minimal setup that I employ when I'm not at home and in a hotel room or guest apartment. Imagine the interplay between a piano and a voice, or a cello and a guitar, or a trumpet and a drum be amazing for this. Especially because it adds an electronic texture that will blend probably very nicely with the acoustic instruments. So thank you David for sending me this. I can recommend this pedal to anyone who is looking to make music more talkative, more alive and more musical for that regard. That's it for this video. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. And I'll put up some music from this episode on my Patreon. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Bye.